Good morning, church. Thank you for tuning in today to hear the word of the Lord. So grab your Bibles and let's worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Here are your announcements for this week. Hey preteens, for this Wednesday we are going to Steveston. We are going to have a photo scavenger hunt from 2 to 5. We're going to meet at Gary Point Park. It's going to be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it. I personally have done this many times. It is a lot of fun. One of my favorite events. So we hope to see you guys there 2 to 5 this Wednesday at Gary Point. Elevate Youth, we are also going to Steveston. We'll be meeting at the Steveston Community Center right outside. We're going to be doing our own photo scavenger hunt and you do not want to miss it. So meet us there outside the Steveston Community Center at 5.30. We also have our midweek worship sessions. They'll be happening on Wednesday. You can find them on our Facebook, um, the YouTube page, and the website. All the links will be right here. So check us out. Good morning, RPC. So glad that you could join us this morning to worship the Lord our God. His name is great, and He is greatly to be praised. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give Him all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for all that He has done for us. You know, there is this old uh, chorus that says, Count your blessings and name them one by one. And you'll be amazed by what the Lord has done. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. We say, Lord, we worship you today. We give you praise. We, we count our blessings, oh God. And Lord, we thank you that you are going to lift us up this morning. And Lord, we just praise your name. And so today, let's just join our, join our hearts together. And as we worship the Lord our God, let's sing this hymn to God. Be the glory, great things he has done. To God be the glory. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord.
the glory, the great things that He has done today. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. freedom awake and alive oh jesus i say your name lifted high oh god you have done great things oh you have done great things be faithful through every storm you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things lord yes you have and i know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things god you do great things Go with me in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 17. As you're looking at that passage of Scripture, I want to read through this with two questions in mind. The first question is, are all religions the same? The second question, which is closely linked to the first one, is, are we not all worshiping the same God? I mean, those who claim to worship God, is it not just the same God that we're all worshiping? We just have different names, we have different pathways, but really it all leads to the same God. Those are the two questions that I want us to keep in mind as we read through these verses in 2 Kings chapter 17. I want to read verses 24 to 35, and I'll probably make a few stops along the way and some comments as we read through these verses. 
starting in verse 24. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Seraphim, and settled them in the towns of Samaria to replace the Israelites. They took over Samaria and they lived in its towns, and when they first lived there, they did not worship the Lord. So he sent lions among them, and they killed some of the people. It was reported to the king of Assyria, the people you deported and resettled in the towns of Samaria do not know what the God of that country requires. He has sent lions among them, which are killing them off because the people do not know what he requires. Then the king of Assyria gave this order, have one of the priests you took captive from Samaria go back to live there and teach the people what the God of the land requires. So one of the priests who had been exiled from Samaria came to live in Bethel and taught them how to worship the Lord. I want to pause right there and just say, friends, we are living in a day when people are being devoured by lions because they do not know what the Lord requires. Their relationships are being devoured. Their finances are being devoured. Their mental health is being devoured. Parents are losing their teenagers to fentanyl in record numbers. For the first time in history, children are being strongly encouraged to question their gender and find their identity in their sexuality. Young boys and girls are being kidnapped, abused, and trafficked right here in our own backyard. The elderly are being held and helped to commit suicide in record numbers, and our society is just sanctioning this with silence. Political corruption is at an all-time high, and the integrity of our politicians are at an all-time low. Violence is rampant on our streets. Babies are being sacrificed on the altar of women's rights, and nobody wants to talk about it. How much more can we take? How many more lives need to be devoured by lions before we will get on our knees and surrender our lives to God? We continue to read in verse 29. Nevertheless, each national group made its own gods in the several towns where they settled. They set them up in the shrines of the people of Samaria that they made in the high places. They worshiped the Lord, but they also appointed all sorts of their own people to officiate for them as priests in the shrines at the high places. They worshiped the Lord, but they also served their own gods in accordance with the customs of the nations from which they had been brought. So we see that the reason why these uh, Samaritans don't know what the Lord requires is that they turned away from God and then they appointed their own priests to teach them about God. As a nation in Canada, I believe, we too have rejected God. We have, generally speaking, shut our ears to the preaching of the gospel, and we have ridiculed the ministry of the church, cast it off to the sidelines, and appointed our own priests, promoting lies such as, aren't all religions the same? Like the people in Samaria, many Canadians are making up their own religions. They call it spiritual, or sorry, they call it spirituality, and they identify themselves as spiritual but not religious. This is a common practice in our nation. So common that just the other day, July 17th, one of the headlines in the National Post read this The Gospel of We, the Legend of the Kielbergers, and their Secularly Sacred movement. Goes on to say, a Queen's University assistant professor in the School of Religion describes it as a new secular spiritual movement. 
The Kielberger brothers claim inspiration from world religions, such as the Tibetan Buddhist Dalai Lama, who has encouraged their compassion, the charitable impulse, which is in Islam, Judaism, and others. The, uh, the journalist goes on to say, the movement lets young participants experience the secular, secularly sacred, in quotes, to live it in their actions and emotions and to wear it on their clothing. Then they end with this statement. The problem the We Charity aims to solve in 2020, the author suggests, is actually spiritual impoverishment. Spiritual impoverishment. Imagine that in a land with so many churches, in a land with so many so-called Christians. People are dying from spiritual impoverishment. Well, the WE movement is actually a great example of what a growing number of Christian teenagers believe in our day. Here's what they believe, summed up in five statements, or four statements. Number one, that God wants people to be good, nice, and fair to each other. Number two, that the central goal of life is to be happy, to feel good about oneself. Number three, that God does not need to be particularly involved in one's life except when he is needed <laughs> to resolve a problem. In other words, you know what? God, you just keep your distance. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do what I want to do. Now, when I get in trouble, I'm going to come to you. But just until then, just stay there. Number four, they believe that good people go to heaven when they die. Now, it's true that people are entitled to believe whatever they want to believe. However, it's not Christianity. And so to call yourself a Christian and believe that God is one of those four, or all of those four, or any of those four, is to deny your faith. It's not exactly what the scriptures tell us is true. It's not even close. And it's the same trap that these people in Israel fell into and the nation of Israel fell into when they chose to reject God. We read in the final verse of our passage today, verse 34, says, to this day, they persist in their former practices. They neither worship the Lord nor adhere to the decrees and regulations, the laws and commands that the Lord gave the descendants of Jacob whom he named Israel. The Bible is so relevant and true. To this day, we persist in these practices of rejecting God, of making our own religions, and compromising our faith for the sake of comfort and people's acceptance. To this day, we are still driving around with coexist bumper stickers on the backs of our cars and we're yelling out the window, can't we all just get along? Well, I can understand that and I too have felt that, maybe even cried out those same words, can't we all just get along? But to disagree doesn't mean we can't all get along. And to get along doesn't mean we all have to be the same or believe the same thing. And in fact, we're not all the same. Listen to what 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 tells us. He says, but for us, that is Christians, those who believe Jesus is the Son of God, those who believe Jesus died and lived the perfect life and rose again and ascended to be at the right hand of the Father, who is this very moment declaring, I am making all things new. Uh, this God who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the God that Paul is talking to in 1 Corinthians as he addresses the church in Corinth. And he says, but for us, there is one God, the Father by whom all things were created and for whom we live. There is one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created and through whom we live. Now, most Eastern religions, whether it's Buddhism, Sikhism, Taoism, they don't believe in a personal God. 
Theirs is more of an impersonal force, and most of them really uh, don't even call it God or even refer to God. It's more of a, a pathway of, of, of teaching. And, um, and I won't get into that in great depth, but just to simply say they don't believe in a personal God, but Christianity believes that God is personal. In John 14, 23, Jesus said this, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them and we will come and make our home within each of them. That's pretty personal. That's up close and personal. Judaism, they just say Jesus was just a rabbi, just another teacher. But Christianity says Jesus is God. And in Colossians 2.9, it says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwelled bodily. Islam, for Islam, Jesus did not die on the cross, and Jesus is just another prophet. For Christianity, Jesus died on the cross, and he rose from the grave. In Philippians 2.8, it says, And being found in human form... Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The Apostle John writes in 1 John 2, 23, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. So, you can see uh, just in those few examples that not all religions are the same. And we are not all worshiping the same God. I like what Ravi Zacharias says. He says, all religions are at best superficially similar, but fundamentally different. So you see, the people in Samaria were trying to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and adding on the worship of their own idols, their own man-made religions at the same time. In that same chapter, 17, verse 41, it says, even while these people were worshiping the Lord, they were serving their idols. To this day, their children and grandchildren continue to do as their ancestors did. What was their religion? It was a religion of compromise. It wasn't just a man-made religion. It was a religion of compromise. And my friends, I'm telling you today, we too are guilty of this same sin today. Today, too many people are calling themselves Christians and they're worshiping other gods, they're following the practices of the nations, and they're secretly doing things against the Lord their God that is not right. Many of us, many of us will serve God uh, long enough to get rid of the lions. You know, when things are bad and they're tough and life's not going well, we might open up the Bible. We, we, we might actually go to church. We might say a prayer or two. But, man, when life is good, who needs God? <laughs> when things are going our way, I mean, you know, who wants to give credit to God? I mean, it was my own effort. It was my own education. It was my own hard work that got me that promotion you know, it's, it's, it's because of I decided to pull myself up by my own bootstraps, even though boots don't have straps anymore, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's just this idea that I'm a self-made man and it's my own efforts and, you know, and, and when I feel comfortable and when I feel like I have the time, yeah, maybe I'll take time to go to church and do that religious thing, but hey, who needs God? God wants total commitment instead of total compromise. He wants our worship to be with all our hearts, all our minds, all our soul, and all our strength. And I would also add, with all our week, not just on Sundays, but the rest of the week. We need to listen to the words of the prophet Elijah who said in 1 Kings 18.21, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. We can't just say nothing. We, we can't just do nothing. 
We, we cannot be afraid to take a stand today for what we believe. You can't back down from giving an answer for the hope that is within you because people need to know what the Lord requires. And when you give that answer, we do it according to Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. We need to tell people who are being devoured by lions what the Lord requires. People who are suffering in sin. People who are wondering why their life is filled with so much sorrow and shame. They, they need to know God. They, they need to see Jesus in you and in me. They need to know what the Lord requires. Will you show them? Not just tell them. Will you show them? by the way you live your life? Will you recommit your life this day as Joshua did when he publicly stood before the nation of Israel and he declared in Joshua 21, or sorry, Joshua 24, verses 14 to 15, he said these words, I want to close with these words. He says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the God's your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and in Richmond and in Vancouver and wherever you find yourself today and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, he's not forcing you. He says, if it seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Don't be double-minded. Don't have double standards. Don't say I serve God on Sundays and I serve myself the rest of the week or I serve some other man-made philosophy. Serve God. Choose today. He says, whether the gods of your ancestors you serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. May that be true for you today and your household. May you decide today, today I will choose to recommit myself and serve only God and worship him alone, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God whose name is Jesus, who loved you and died for you, the, the, the God who wants to rescue you in your situation and, and destroy the lions that are devouring your households. Today, choose Jesus. Today, place your faith and trust in him alone, and he will come to you. He will rescue you, and he will give you life everlasting. It's the promise of his word. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your word is true, and your word continues to speak to us today. Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your promises. We thank you, Lord, that when we turn to you, God, you meet us, you rescue us, you forgive us, you cleanse us, you renew us, <laughs> and you give us hope for the future. There is no other God like you. And we declare this today in the presence of many witnesses, including your angels that are watching and they're waiting for those who will call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. And I pray for those who are listening today that they would surrender their hearts to you, that they would give themselves fully to you and this day would choose to follow you alone. And I pray this in the amazing name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, we stand amazed in your presence today. We are astounded by your mercy. We are astounded by your love. Lord, you hold creation together. You hold the universe together. But most importantly, Lord, you hold our hearts together. You bind us together in you. And today, God, we just want to lift up our hearts and worship you and praise you for who you are and your love toward us.
hearts together, there is no one higher than you. There's no one higher. Redeemer, defender, our great and mighty Savior, there's no one higher than you. You are always with us. You're gracious to forgive us. And by your power we've been set free. And Lord, we stand amazed in your presence. Astounded by your mercy and love. Our hands are There is no one greater than you. May my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than you. Majestic in wonder, you reign in love forever. There is no splendor, your glory knows no measure, there's no one higher than you, cause you are always with us, you're gracious to forgive us, by your power we've been set free. May my life forever praise the 
forever praise the glory of your name let our lives forever praise the glory of your name you deserve all the glory you deserve all the worship you deserve all the honor deserve all the praise because there is no one high there is no one higher than you Thank you once again for joining us today. Hope to see you next week. And until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen. Thanks for watching along with us. It's now time to give our tithes and offerings. There are so many easy ways you can do this. First, jump on our website, rpcchurch.ca, and click on that link that says Give. You can also give through the Tithely Church app and connect to Richmond Pentecostal Church. Giving by phone, you can also text the word GIVE to 844-535-5176. And of course, you can drop off cash, checks, and questions in person at our office on Westminster Highway, Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thanks for your support.